So why are we listening to Crickets in the Dark? Because it's the introduction to one of my stories today. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Good morning, friends. I was in a bit of a screwy mood last night when I made that intro, but it really is the beginning of one of today's stories. I was lying in my bed trying to go to sleep, and as is my habit, I had the windows open listening to the crickets and the sounds of Lake Chapala. It's my white noise, um, and it's how I love lying there going to sleep. Well, I was lying there with my head on my pillow, with my left ear to the pillow, listening to the crickets and the waves. And suddenly I rolled over and I laid with my head on the pillow with my right ear. And suddenly I realized I couldn't hear the crickets and the waves. I had become deaf in my left ear. So the next morning I went to the doctor and I'm telling you this story because I know y'all like to know how's life in Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico, uh, and how much things cost. And I'll tell you how much it cost me for this doctor's visit in a minute. So I had him look in my ear, and sure enough, he confirmed what I had thought. Now, I've always thought that my head was full of a lot of brains, but it turns out that there's a whole lot of space in there for earwax. And I didn't film this, and I'm not going to describe it for you, but I was shocked at how much of that he pulled out of my ears. Whew. Anyway, my hearing is as good as it always has been now, and uh, I have extraordinary hearing. I always, not just occasionally, but always <laughs> hear the phones ring at my neighbor's house, not only here, but other places I've lived. Uh, so how much did it cost for me to go to the doctor and have him clean out my ears? It cost 700 pesos, which is $35 uh, U.S. dollars. So I asked him, I said, is this something that a guy my age ought to do regularly? And he said, yeah, probably like once a year, it would be a good idea. I'm going to put it into my budget. It's $35. That's like, you know, $3 a month. I'm going to make it a line item in my budget. $35 a year to have my ears cleaned out. <laughs> hey, I want to thank uh, all the people who've made a positive comment about my alligator on the wall. Maybe I should show you a better picture of it. Hang on. It's uh, paper mache, and it comes from a shop up in Talakapaki, which is a suburb of Guadalajara. And uh, I used to have a clock. I, don't, I think it's gone. Yeah, I used to have a clock in there. You know, making a reference to Peter Pan. Actually, there's another thing in the house that's part of the story, if I tell you the story about that. This lamp is part of the story and how we got that lamp. When Lynn and I were down here, um, the, actually, I think it was our second time, it would have been in 2002, we were in a store and saw that lamp and both fell in love with it, just really thought we had to have it, but the problem was we didn't have a house here yet. We were still coming and going in a motorhome and being here for six months at a time and renting while we were here. So we didn't buy it. Uh, three, four years later, uh, we owned a house and we went looking for that lamp, but we couldn't find it. And maybe a year after that, so now we're talking about 2005, 2006 maybe, we met a, a couple um, that became good friends. And they lived 
at the top of Chula Vista in a very nice house. And the first time we were invited to their house, we were amazed to see our lamp. <laughs> and of course, we tried to buy it from them, but no, they weren't selling it. Now, skip ahead another many years. So now it's like 2012, 2013, and uh, they decided to move back to the United States. And they were having a garage sale, but they called us up and said, hey, uh, come get your lamp. So it was a gift. <laughs> uh, we also had expressed an interest in another thing that they had lying up on the top of their kitchen cupboards, the alligator. And we bought the alligator from them. It was expensive, but about half the price that they paid for it. So anyway, uh, that's the story of the lamp and the alligator. It's an overcast morning here on the north shore of Lake Chapala. It's about 9.30 in the morning. It's 64 degrees. I'm loving that when I look at the heat map in the United States this time of the year in the middle of July. This is looking north towards Guadalajara. Those mountains there are about 8,000 feet. I'm always attracted to the picture of clouds hanging in those mountains. So beautiful this time of year. So green, so beautiful. I came down off of my roof to see if I could get a better picture of the color from this angle down here in the street. And it's starting to rain on me a little bit again. But before I run back in the house, I wanted to show you I got my boat planted. We have uh, cilantro planted in the front there. And that's mint and oregano and chives and basil. And in this large area in the front here, I've planted green onions. I'm real happy with how the boats turned out. Got my kitchen pantry cabinet done. This is me brad nailing the backing onto the cabinet. Hanging the doors and admiring my work. There we are. All finished and installed. I have to put the hardware on it. Some pull handles and some latches to hold it closed. And magically they appear. I am happy with it. It's cleaned out some of the other cupboards. And what it really does is it keeps me from having to bend over at the waist and look down underneath something to find things all the time. Got it. Well, what else is on my mind today? Sometimes I read a comment from you guys and enjoy all of them, of course, but sometimes they remind me of a story, and this one did. The question was, what in the world would I be doing with a uh, hundred sterilized test tubes? It's not the kind of thing that you usually find in somebody's house. And the question came on the video that I did uh, a few videos ago about testing all the water, Lake Chapala and the water in my house and um, the Garifans. And thank you very much to the guy who made a comment to correct my pronunciation of Garifans. He, he objected to me saying Garifans. 
And I just wanted to say thank you for the Spanish lesson. Lessons de Espanol, muy importante para mí. Gracias. Anyway, uh, why do I have a hundred sterilized test tubes? Well, several years ago, my son, who's in the business of buying and selling insects, but refuses to do anything internationally because it causes uh, potential legal problems for him, hooked me up with a guy in Germany who wanted to buy a um, hundred leaf cutter ant queens. And uh, I'll put a link up here to uh, a video I did about ant wars with leaf cutter ants a few years ago. Here's a picture of leaf cutter ants. They can be about an inch long. This one in the ruler is about an uh, inch and a half counting the wings, but it, the body is an inch long. And once a year, those queens fly out of the nest and uh, start new colonies. Anyway, the guy in Germany wanted a hundred of them, and in order to ship them, I needed test tubes. So I did, and I shipped him 100 of them. And the procedure is that you capture them and put them in the test tube, and then you stuff it with some uh, moistened, a moistened cotton ball um, and seal the tube, and they're all packed very well and sent off to Germany. And we did this um, with a permit from the German government and uh, it was all legal and above board because he was a research scientist in Germany. Um, here in Mexico, now the laws have changed considerably since I did that a few years ago. They've made laws against collecting these ants because, um, well, that's another long story, but the federal government of Mexico has decided you shouldn't be collecting insects unless you have a permit. Anyway, um, I collected them, I boxed them all up, I packaged them as they should be. It cost, uh, he paid me $5 per ant, so he sent me $500 on PayPal plus $135 uh, for shipping. Uh, FedEx from Mexico to uh, Germany. I got a call from the aduana or the customs agent at... Uh, the airport in Guadalajara, and uh, he said, um, ¿Qué es Ara Mexicana? What is Ara Mexicana? Which is how they were labeled, and that's the Latin name for the ants. And when I explained to him that they were uh, hormigas, ants, uh, his reaction, uh, much to my surprise, was, well, hey, can you send any more of them out of the country? Because <laughs> leafcutter ants are a problem here. Anyway, uh, the next year, I wasn't going to be here when the ants fly. This usually happens in June. And uh, they fly out for a day and they uh, are, are so, there are so many of them. Some years it's light, but some years it, there are so many of them that they have to like scoop shovel them off of the sidewalks um, in downtown Ahihik. Um, that hasn't happened for a few years, but it has happened. Anyway, I, I wasn't going to be here, so I set up a Mexican friend to do the shipment. And I don't know, they didn't fly, or not enough of them flew, or he got busy doing something else. So anyway, it didn't happen, but all of the test tubes and the cotton balls that I had purchased for him to do that are still sitting in my laundry storage room. Somebody's walking around in my yard. Hang on a second. Well, <laughs> it was the pool guy. <laughs> Not recognizing the pool guy as he walked across my lawn. Reminds me of the time many, 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 many years ago when I called the police at 4.30 in the morning because a guy drove past and threw something at my house and hit my window. It didn't break, but made a noise and I happened to be up and standing there and didn't see it, but I heard it. And anyway, called the police. Turned out it was my newspaper. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. 
Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.